hello welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video which is going to be a sales update i haven't brought you guys one of these for a while i've been pretty busy for those of you who are new to my channel i am a part-time ebay reseller located in bristol which is in the southwest of england in the uk i was full-time ebay was my full-time job and has been for about five or six years but ebay has become a little bit more erratic recently i wanted to take something that would just give me that little bit of reassurance with the cost of living going the way it is. I wanted that bit of reassurance that there was a solid lump of money that was going to pay the rent, etc. So I've taken a part-time job recently. I did take a full-time job. I've gone to a part-time job very quickly. Full-time was not right for me, not with eBay and YouTube as well. But it's a while since I've done a sales update, so that's what today's video is going to be. But before I do the sales update, I want to talk to you about this. You may remember some time ago, I was very kindly contacted by a company called Munbin and they asked me if I would like a new label printer, a new 4x6 label printer and I said I would love to try your label printer. They sent me it. You can see probably here I think a little bit of the video of where I tried that out and I can link that one below for if you'd like to go and look. And the label printer is fabulous. It's a really good, very compact, very useful little printer. I work from home. This is a home office. It's a spare bedroom. I don't have room for a lot of stuff because all of the stock is in here. You can't see that. This, this is this is the one bit that looks tidy because this is the photo area. But the rest of the room, all of the stock from my eBay is crammed into this room. There's probably 2,000 items in this room, plus all of the packaging, plus the unlisted items, plus a few of the usual things that people have. Like I've got my sewing stuff in here because I don't have anywhere else for it to be. In an ideal world, you'd have a sewing room and a craft room and an eBay room. And in an ideal world, we'd all live in a mansion when we have servants. <laughs> So this room is overcrowded and having something compact is fantastic for that. And so I'm loving the Mumbin label printer and so grateful for them for sending it to me. So when they got in touch and said, would I like a new shipping scale? Would I like to try their new shipping scale? I said, yes, please. And why was I excited? I was excited because the shipping scale goes up to 30 kilos. And you'll be seeing a little bit of footage of me unboxing that now. So as you can see in the box, I've got, firstly, it's a very nice little box. I do like a nice, nice new box. There is the scale itself. There is, as well as batteries, there is a cable. So I can run it either on the batteries or by plugging it in. This is great for me because some days I might do a lot of parcels. Some days I might be doing 20 to 25 parcels and I might want it plugged in and save the batteries. Other days I might just want to be wanting to weigh one thing very quickly. Sometimes I weigh things as I'm listing to make sure that I'm setting the postage correctly. So to have it battery operated and not have to plug it in all the time is another win, I think. The best thing about it is it goes up to 30 kilos. I was using before a kitchen scale. Here's my kitchen scale, it goes up to five kilos. That can go in the bin. I'm only kidding, there's nothing wrong with it. It'll just go back down to the kitchen and be used in the kitchen or be donated to a charity shop or whatever. It's perfectly good scale, but it only goes up to five kilos. And this new shipping scale goes up to 30 kilos. That's gonna be fantastic because sometimes I do ship larger items. So let's get into the sales and I'll come back to the shipping scale in a little while. So what I've done for this video, is I've just picked out a few, I think I've got, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen, I'm lucky for some, thirteen of my highest value sales since the last time I did a video. The last time I did a sales video was the 5th of April, so although there are thirteen nice sales for me, it just shows you how eBay has changed because I don't think any of these sales are much more than 50 or 60 pounds. A lot of people out there seem to be doing 50, 60 pound sales as a matter of course, but I'm tight. I don't spend much. If you don't spend much, you can't expect your return to be huge. But it also, for me, means that my risk isn't very huge. I can't get on board with the idea of having a lot of money tied up in one item and hoping it will sell. I'd rather spread my money over lots of smaller items and have that trickle coming in. So my first item today is this Filofax Guildford Slimline Leather Business Work Organiser and Inserts. And it's basically a Filofax planner, but it's an old one. This was a soft cover, very soft cover, very old, and the older ones do sell. People collect Filofax. I've talked about this in my videos before. People actually collect them. It is an actual thing where people have shelves and shelves of them. There are modern collections where people just collect every one that comes out in every colour. But they're also kind of more like... I suppose I'd say serious collectors who go back and they want, I want that one because I haven't got it and that one, they only made six of that one or whatever. So don't ever overlook a file of facts just because you think, oh, that's a bit old because there's often some good value in there. And this one went for 39 99 plus 3 95 postage. I got this at the car boot sale in filler bag. That means it cost me 20 25p at the most. Next up is this Danoon rugger mugger. <laughs> Try saying that without saying the B word instead. 
It is a tall coffee mug made by Danoon, who are a Scottish mug company, pottery, clay, what, you know, I don't know what I want to say there, but they make, they, they make tableware and they're based in Scotland. And a lot of Danoon mugs have really good resale value if you pick them up. I don't know if, I wouldn't say all because maybe some don't, you know, but a lot of them, particularly the unusual shapes or the more unusual designs. As you can see, this one has rugby players on it and that's always going to be of extra appeal because a lot of people would like to give that as a gift. I sold this... I saw it on the 9th of May, which I'm pretty sure is about a few couple of weeks before Father's Day here in the UK. My dad's no longer around, so I don't necessarily mark that day. But it would not surprise me in the slightest to discover that this has sold to someone for their dad. It went for £19.99 plus £3.95 postage. And again, it came from the car boot sale. It will have cost me a pound at the very, very most. I wouldn't have paid more than a pound. If it was in filler bag, it would have been less than a pound. But I've got a feeling I bought this one individually and it cost me a quid. Next up is this Jenny Packham number no. one beaded prom dress and this sold twice. It has been listed for a very very long time. It came in the sacks and I think it came in the sacks maybe as much as 18 months to two years ago. It's a really really nice dress, heavy beaded detail all the way down and I had it listed at 49.99 plus postage and obviously with best offer. I have best offer on almost everything. There's very little stuff that I don't put best offer on and I price slightly higher in my original pricing to account for the fact that I'm probably going to take a best offer. My idea of a best offer is not less than three quarters of my original price. So when I price with best offer and I might put it on at 19.99 with best offer, if you send me a three pound offer you're just going to get the decline I'm afraid. I'm not playing. If you start at 14, I'll counter, for example. But my idea is if I price it at 20, I'm not going under 15, unless I've had it hanging around for a very, very long time. This one had been in stock for a while, but it was worth hanging on for prom season because I said it sold twice. The first time it sold, I was very pleased it went at full price. A few days later it came back because it didn't fit the lady in question, you can't do much about that, that's how it is. But it sold again within a couple of days of relisting and it sold on a best offer of £42. I was really pleased with that, like I said it came in the sacks. When I say it came in the sacks, if you are new here, every few months I get a bulk buy of clothing from a local charity shop manager. Um, it is everything that she has had on her shop floor that hasn't sold. I don't take a lot of menswear and I don't take kids wear because I find that kids wear doesn't really have resale value on eBay unless it is designer or bundles and I can't be bothered to store bundles so I don't tend to do kids wear. I don't do a lot of menswear because I don't know much about menswear. I've been single for a very very long time. My son wears camo. Yeah. <laughs> menswear is not our forte in this house but it's mostly ladies wear. And I get some really, really good stuff in those sacks. I get a lot of run-of-the-mill stuff as well. I'm lucky in that this charity shop is in quite a nice area and she's fussy about what she puts out. So there's never any Primark or Florence and Fred or whatever, or Tesco stuff. It's always upper high street brands, the kind of stuff like that you, you would look at and go, well, that's nice, but it's a bit much normally. That's the kind of stuff I get in the sacks. And this was in the sacks. This Jenny Pack and Prom dress was in the sacks. Everything in the sacks cost me less than 50p. By the time I have sorted it, kept what I want to keep and moved on the rest because I move the rest on in bulk. Everything I keep costs me less than 50p. In some cases it works out practically free because what I sell in bulk will cover what I'm keeping. But I always say less than 50p if it's in the sacks. So less than 50p into £42, I will take that any day of the week. If you can find yourself a charity shop contact like that, it is a very, very, very beautiful thing. I am very grateful for it. There have been times when I felt overwhelmed by it. There's been times when it's come in such a large quantity and I've been particularly busy and I've like, I can't deal with this. And it's bit, felt a little bit like the porridge pot. You know, the um, there's an old fairy tale of the never ending porridge pot that just kept producing porridge until they were all drowning in porridge. It's felt a bit like that at times, but even so, I'm very grateful for this deal that I have. She's a nice lady, all above board. She's cleared it with her management. They're quite happy to do this. It's a small chain, so I think the larger chains, perhaps you wouldn't be so successful trying to settle that because they're quite happy to move their stock around all of their stores and get it to a wider audience. This is a smaller chain and so they don't have that many stores to move the stock around. Anyway, that's that one. Next up is this Lipsy VIP grey lace sheath dress with feather trim. It was a beautiful dress, very impractical. You would definitely wear it and sit down quietly in a corner somewhere because you would get these feathers caught on things or they'd fly off. But it was a beautiful, beautiful dress. I got it from Steve the Car Boot Guy. 
It doesn't usually sell clothing, but one particular car boot morning I was there and he had a little pile of clothing on his store and it was all very nice names. So there was some very nice lipsy stuff. There was a couple of Vivienne Westwood. There was a Vivienne Westwood dress and a blouse. Um, a few other bits, probably about six or seven items. And I said to him, what's going on here, Steve? You don't normally have clothes. And he said, oh, you know, the, the missus has got it to, to somebody give it to her to sell. Asked him how much. And he said, I don't really know. So we came to a deal where I would take it and sell it and we would go halves on the proceeds. And I said to him, this is on the understanding that I don't know how long this will take to sell. I don't know. It could sell within days. It could be longer when it could take with sell within sell months. That was... It was a cold day. I think that was like January, February time. This has finally sold May, June. Steve's OK with that. He also understands, because he's done eBay himself in the past, he understands about fees and tax. So he will get half of that selling price. I'm pointing over there because the computer's over there, but you're seeing it here, aren't you? He will get half of that selling price after I have deducted the tax because I'll have to pay full tax on that. I can't, I, you know, I mean, it, it, it's not, I can't go. I, oh, well, Steve's got to pay half that tax. That's on my eBay account. I'll pay tax. So after I've deducted the tax costs and the fees and all the rest of it, Steve will get half of what's left over. And he's absolutely fine with that because it's quite a nice bundle of stuff. He doesn't want to do eBay himself and he definitely doesn't want to eBay women's clothing. So essentially, it's cost me nothing, but that's not my profit. That, not my profit. My profit on that. I'm probably going to get about 15, 16 quid out of it. So it's not the wonderful banger that it looks like it is on the screen for me this time. But it's OK, isn't it? I'm happy if I make 15 to 16 pound on profit on an item of my own. So I'm happy with this. That, however, is not an arrangement I would come to with very many people. I'm not really interested. Excuse me, just open a drink. I'm not really interested in selling other people's stock for them. It was only because it was Steve and because he and I have a good working relationship. I scratch his back, he scratches mine. This Peruvian Connection black micro-modal, I'm looking over there because I'm looking at it on the screen, black micro-modal black shift dress large. Peruvian Connection dress, where did that come from? I think it came from Newport. No, it didn't. It came from Newton Abbott when I was down with Caroline one day. It came from Newton Abbott and I think it was £3.50. It was one of their charity shops down there that doesn't often miss much, but this one had um, slipped through the net. I think it was £3.50, it sold for £39.99 plus postage, and it sold fairly quickly. Peruvian Connection is a lovely brand if you can pick it up. This is a very plain, boring item. They do some much more interesting stuff than this, but even so, Peruvian Connection, always worth looking out for. GHDs, I picked these up at the car boot sale. They were listed less than a fortnight. Um, I paid £5, I think. I could go back through my recent videos, or I could go back through paper. I think it was a fiver. may even have been four. The only thing missing out of the box was the, the heat protective mat that, they, that you wrap them up in. That was the only thing that wasn't there. But they'd only been used once. The lady said to me, I used, I, she said, my, my, my niece said to me I should get straighteners. So I did, but I couldn't get on with them. And I burnt my ear and I'm not using them again. So, so there we go. I paid, I think it was four, it may have been five. I think she wanted five and I paid four. I can't remember which way round it was. Four or five quid. They sold within a couple of weeks and I took an offer on those. I think I had them listed at 59.99. Somebody offered me 50 quid and I took the offer on them. Very pleased, nice turnover. A lot of hair care stuff sells surprisingly well. This is one that I'm not sure if I've shown you before. When I was going through my recent solds, this one popped back up and I was like, should that be there or not? Let me just see if I can check the date I sold it. No, I sold this on the 25th of May, which means you haven't seen it. Because the last time I did a sales video was the 5th of April. This is a vintage perfume. I got it from the car boot sale. I think I paid two quid. Two quid is one of those things where somebody's got a box and it's all rummaged around, it's all a bit mucky. And I made two pounds for it. It is a sealed um, Le Jardin by Max Factor Eau de Toilette Spray, 60ml, vintage sealed. I don't know what that will smell like when they open it and spray it, if they open it and spray it. Perhaps they won't. Some people who collect vintage perfumes have no intention of wearing them. They just want to collect them in their sealed packaging. I don't know how well perfume lasts. I know you shouldn't keep it in sunlight, for example. Once it's open, I know it deteriorates. But if it's sealed, does it last forever? I have no idea. Anyway, this cost me two quid, sold for 49.99 plus postage. That was a lovely find. I knew when I found it that was a good one, but you don't find sealed vintage perfumes that often. Another nice one was this Runebound game. This was picked up at the car boot sale no more than six weeks ago. I listed it within about a fortnight of getting it because I'm a bit slow on my listing because I've got a big death pile again. And when I went to list it, I discovered there was an expansion pack inside, which was nice as well, because that added to the value. So I listed this one at 59 99 And as you can see, I've taken quite a low offer on 59 99 I've taken an offer of £45. If you get me on a day when the, scale, when the sales have been particularly slow, I'm more likely to take a lower offer. 
I just thought to myself, I know I paid a fiver. I'm turning that fiver into 45. Let's have a quick turn around. Let's get some money in. Quite happy with that return. So this is just one of those more unusual niche games. It's not your standard everyday board game that people play with their kids. It's a more along the lines of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a more involved game that that adults tend to play as a kind of a mission kind of game rather than just a let's get a board game out and pass a Sunday afternoon. It's more of a let's have an evening of playing Runebound. You know, you, I know you know someone who goes and plays Dungeons and Dragons. I know you do. We all know someone. Fair play to him if that's what makes him happy. Another nice one was these four IKEA blue and white floral print boxes. Now we know that the Kath Kidston Rosalie flower print ones, we know they sell, we know they're worth picking up. With, but, but when I saw these four blue and white ones, I thought, I wonder if they're worth anything. The good thing about these IKEA droner boxes is they're what I use for my own stock storage. So if I bring them home and they're not worth anything, I can always use them. But so far I've found three prints that are worth selling. That's the IKEA Rosalie. These blue and white ones turn out to be okay, and then there's a yellow and white kind of floral bamboo print as well. They're always worth grabbing. I didn't buy them very long ago. I think I paid a pound each. They may have been a pound each. They may have come in a bundle, because at one point I bought a big bundle of Ikea boxes. I'm not sure. I know I wouldn't have paid very much. If it was the Rosalie ones, I might have paid up as much as two, three, two, three pound each, but I know I wouldn't have paid much for these because I wasn't sure whether I was going to resell them. However, I put them on at £50 or best offer. They sold for £37.50 plus £6.95 postage. And the lady lived very close. So I was not I was able to save on the postage as well. So yeah, please with those. £37.50 for like a couple of quid at the most each. They may I may have paid £2 each and paid £8 altogether. I don't feel like I did. I feel like I paid less than that. I had a massive haul of Nigella Lawson stuff. I, I struck gold on Facebook Marketplace. I don't buy a lot on Facebook Marketplace. I don't sell on there because I find... Yeah, the most frustrating selling platform because nobody wants to have anything posted off there. They all want local collection and they don't turn up. They always say, yeah, I'll be there at five. And then you wait and they don't turn up. And they say, oh, I forgot or whatever. I hate selling on there, but I quite like buying on there. And every now and again, I have a rummage around to see what I can find. But I don't do it regularly. It's just an occasional thing. This particular day, I was I struck lucky because the lady had put up a picture of some of the Nigella storage canisters. They look like tea, coffee, sugar canisters, but they're larger. And she had quite a few of them. I think she had like six of one size and seven of the other. And I messaged her and I said, are they still available? And she said, yes. And she, and, and she cut me a really good price on them. And I was really, really delighted, even with the price just for that. And then she said, I've actually got a lot more Nigella stuff. I just haven't got around to sorting it out yet. And I said to her, I'm really interested. If you can let me know what you've got, I'm really, really interested. She cut me the most amazing deal. I had this set. I had bowls, I had cups and saucers, I had those storage canisters, I had bread and butter dish, I had egg cups, I had um, the salt and pepper pigs, so much stuff. There was, I filled the car basically with Nigella stuff and she charged me £75 for the lot. It was amazing, it was the most amazing deal and I actually remember saying to her, are you sure? Are you sure that then she, she was like, yeah, I just want it gone. She said, I've changed my colour scheme. She said, it's all very well having duck egg blue, but when you change your kitchen, it doesn't go. You're stuck with it all. And to be fair, I went to pick it up from her house. She was in Lydney in Gloucestershire, which is just off the corner of the Forest of Dean. It's a beautiful house. This lady plainly had disposable income. So I didn't feel too bad, but I did check with her. She was absolutely sure that the price she'd give me for the lot was what she wanted. And she was sure and I was so pleased. Anthony came out with me that evening. Sometimes if I go for a late evening drive, he says, oh, I'll come along. And uh, he said, I'll drive home because he likes driving on the country lanes. I'm not so keen on country lanes. I don't mind driving. I'll drive anywhere. But country lanes, I'm always a bit more cautious because I might never know what might be in the road when you go around a bend. But Anthony loves a country lane. I'm not saying he's a dangerous driver, but he's more confident driving on a country lane than me. All the way home, I was like, slow down, slow down. You'll break my Nigella stuff. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't even driving fast. He was probably doing perfectly with, well within the speed limit. But I was like, don't go over any bumps. Don't go over any bumps. <laughs> It all got home in one piece. A couple of pieces on, on dispatch have not made it to the customer in one piece. I've learned that my packaging needs to be better and I have worked on that. Anyway, this lot was one of the um, second or third lots to go, I think. And this is a, it's a dip platter. So a massive platter that you put all the crudités on and then you've got the little dip bowls and whatever. And it went for £33 for the set. I can't tell you how much I've made out of that Nigella deal. I just know that I'm massively in profit on that and I'm chuffed to bits with it. £33 for the set. However, this was a bugger to pack. Absolute bugger to pack because they all had to be packed individually. And then that platter, that was my phone, as you can see, I'm clumsy. That platter is huge. It's 
the size of a, a car tire. It's a it's a big small car tire, but it's a big big thing. So finding a box that that would fit in was a challenge just on its own, let alone putting the bowls in with it. But it did get there in one piece. The buyer was happy, and I was happy to get thirty three pound for that set. Like I said, out of that of that entire deal. This is a fun one because this is a golf bag strap, and if you watch my car boot haul videos you may have seen this one pop up it was a haul that I did in my mum's kitchen because I'd gone straight there from the car boots and I did the haul in her kitchen and there was this 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 thing that I pulled out a filler bag I paid 20p 20p in filler bag and I couldn't work out what it was I thought it was a weightlifting belt of some kind so I'm looking at this thing and it's got these buckles and I'm going to myself it's a weightlifting belt and of course when I looked it up it was a golf bag handle golf bag strap 20 quid 20 quid just for a strap? Who's paying 20 quid for a strap for their golf bag? This dude. This dude or this lady. She may be a lady golfer. I was really pleased. It cost me 20p. It came in fill a bag. It sold for 20 quid. Just goes to show that some of the weird... Somebody said to me once, you don't have to pick up some crap in this fill bag. I know, but some of it turns out to be really worth having. Next up is a pair of curtains. These are John Lewis curtains and they've got camper vans and scooters and things printed all over. And I've had them in stock for a thousand years. When I picked them up, I was like, those are brilliant. Those are definitely going to sell. I think I got them in the Brake charity shop. I think it's Brake, although it might not be, in Winterbourne. I think that's where they came from. It's so long ago that I can barely remember. I think I paid a fiver. I've got a feeling they were a fiver and they've been listed for a very, very long time. Finally sold. 30 quid plus postage. They've taken up a bit of real estate in that time. I mean, the good thing about curtains is you can pack them and put them away and just label the pack, bag and don't have to get them out again. But even so, they've taken up a bit of space in that time. I'm glad they've gone now. I thought they'd sell way quicker than they did. But £5 into 30 they were still worth picking up. They were just a slow burner. I've got a pair of Asics shoes. Um, I never thought that Asics was a brand worth picking up, to be honest. I thought they were... I think because the name sounds like basic i think i thought they were a bit of a budget brand but apparently they some of them are some of them are not some of them are pricey and this pair went for 30 pound 52 plus postage that's an odd number 30 pound 52 i think they must have sent me an offer or either that i must have sent them a percentage offer so sometimes i send out offers and maybe i sent a 15 percent or something can't have been a 10 percent can it because how would i have ended up with 30 pound 52 either i sent them a percentage offer or they sent me one. Sometimes you find it's going abroad. It's going abroad on the GSP. And so the price that they see in their country is in their currency. And they send you an offer that when it was converted to their currency would be a round number. So perhaps the £30.52 that I got in GBP was €35 Euro or something like that. You know, A lot of the clothing that I've sold in this video has gone on the GSP. I find that interesting because I know we're having a cost of living crisis here in the UK. If my higher end higher end to me I understand these are not exactly designer but anything to me that sells for over 35 pound is, is a biggie if my higher end clothing stuff is going on the GSP does that mean that other countries are not experiencing the same cost of living crisis that we are maybe more of my higher sales will end up going abroad because we can't afford to buy stuff here I don't know these came from the car boots and I think they cost me a pound they may have been two pounds but they've gone for 30 pound 52 plus postage this is my last one and this is actually number 14 because I had an extra one just for luck. I'm not actually particularly superstitious but maybe some of you guys are and 13 would have been uncomfortable for you. So I've added this extra one in and this is a Monster High doll bundle. I paid a pound for the three. Literally a car boot sale lady was like oh those dolls three for a pound. There were only three of them there I'd have got more if there were more. They weren't even in perfect condition I think there's a hand missing there but as long as you declare that that's fine. I got thirty-four ninety-nine again going on the GSP. Maybe people abroad have bought more money. Thirty-four ninety-nine for my quid. I will take that and I will laugh all the way to the bank every day of the week on that one. I hope you've enjoyed this um, sales video. Normally I put some duds in. I just I thought we'd keep it upbeat today and we've leave the duds out. But believe me, they exist. Oh, so many duds. So many things that I have bought and I've thought that'll get me a fortune. It turns out to be worthless or it just doesn't shift. There's plenty of duds. If you want to check my eBay sales history, you'll see the stuff that's gone for pennies. You'll see the stuff that's gone for not very much money. But I thought we'd keep this one upbeat and just go, look how wonderful life is. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of packaging now, show you me using my lovely new parcel scale from Munbin. There will be links in the description box to the parcel scale. Remember to check those out. I'll also link the original printer and I'll link the video where I unbox the original printer as well for you so that you can have a look at that if you want to. Thank you for joining me for today's video and I'll see you soon. Take care.
Bye for now.